try turning it on. Okay, this is um, taken from two women who presented at the TESOL International. So last time, uh, if you remember, I did sort of like a summary of some of the thinking going on in TESOL International. And this time, um, I'm going to give you one of the, the specific presentations that someone did, because I thought it was really relevant to what we do and what we might do in our classes. And um, what's nice about it is you can find a lot of the information online. And uh, again, this was done at the TESOL 2014 in Portland, Oregon. You can find a recorded version of this online, but you have to pay for it. <laughs> and you have to pay like $15 for it. So um, what I wanted to do uh, is first, before we started the actual activities, we're just going to go over three different games that um, these, the, the two women uh, we have Eleanor Westfold and uh, Lorne Lee Chelsea. Chisi. Um, they, they introduced three different games. We'll do the games, we'll play the games, we'll talk a little bit about them. I'll encourage you to talk about any games that you have used that have been successful and that you liked in your classroom to share those games with the rest of us. And um, before we do that, though, I wanted to just share with you the TESOL website because I think one of the nice things is that you can always go here for resources. So this right here is the front page of the TESOL Live Learning Center. So what we can see right here is from the TESOL conference, they have recorded some of the sessions. There were think something like 900 workshops. They don't have all 900. <laughs> but they took about like 20 to 30 workshops and they recorded them. And so you can view one for free. This one is Bring Your A Game, Building Classroom Harmony Among Di uh, Diverse Learners. Um, and there are a bunch of other ones as well online. So. Again, you have to pay, I think it's $15 plus some change for individual workshops, or you can pay $174 or $5 for all of the 20 workshops. It's a little expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I figured since that's a little bit expensive, we may look at the TESOL conference site itself. Every time TESOL does a conference, one of the things that we want to look for, even if we can't go to the conference, is right here. Download convention handouts. So basically, what I would encourage you to do is you can go online and you can find, see they have the schedule at a glance. Um, you can click on it. Here again, this is the download convention handouts. You can click on the schedule and download it. And so you can read the apps, the abstracts and all of those online and then decide which of the sessions you'd be interested to get more information about. Once you do that, you just write down the presenter's last name, either of the presenters, um, and then, or you, um, you can say the type of session or the content area if you're searching for it. And you begin search, and it will show you, like, if there's a Smith, there's probably going to be a ton of them because there's a lot of Smiths in the U.S. But it will show you the first name, the last name, the title of the presentation, and then you can download the handouts for free. So even if you can't go, at least you're like, hey, I like vocabulary, or I like grammar games, or I like this, or I like that. And then you can find all of the information online. So that's really nice. Everybody is flushed <laughs> from the heat. <laughs> okay, so again, going through, this is nice. The next thing that I wanted to share with you is we can live stream any of the main speakers. Um, so what was nice about this is some of you saw the workshop that I did where we, we watched the John Hunter talk from last year's TESOL, and we, it was a live stream talk that we watched. Um, basically, what they do is they record it, 
It looks like this. This is um, James Atlas, and he did a talk on the five megatrends shaping the future of TESOL. And so what we can do is we can actually watch it as it's online. But um, one thing to notice about this, while it's wonderful, don't try to fast forward or rewind. <laughs> because any time you fast forward or rewind, it will go back to the beginning. <laughs> and then you have to watch the 20 minutes of the president talking and this person and that person before you actually get to the speaker you want to see. <laughs> so uh, what I normally do is I start it, I go, I do some whatever I need to do, cut vegetables, do this, do that, and by the time I'm finished with all of that, I've gotten to the point where it's actually the speaker that I want to hear. <laughs> so um, that's how I do that, and I have not yet figured out, I don't think you can download these. So um, you'll have to, to go online to get them. So that means you also need good internet because uh, with live stream, it's really important to have um, a good capacity to load it. Okay, so I wanted to share that with you because I didn't know if you knew about the ability to get the handouts or not and or look at some of the plenary sessions. So the plenary sessions are always quite nice at TESOL. You can even go back several years, like 2013 is still up, 2012 is still up, so you can look at other plenary sessions if you wanted to. Um, okay, so why are games useful in the classroom? This is for y'all to discuss first, kind of like our warm-up. So maybe if you can, in your tables or near whomever you're sitting, if you'll just talk about games, vocabulary games that you've used. If they were successful, why or why not? How did the students engage with the games? Were they um, excited? Were they interested? Was it just kind of like, eh? So what was it like? And um, did it impact their fluency that you could tell when they were in the game itself? Um, and were they interested, okay? So let's just take uh, five minutes. If you don't know each other, go ahead and introduce yourselves <laughs> and uh, then talk about the questions. And after five minutes, I'll stop and ask you what you discussed, okay? 